Welcome back there, buds. Today, we'll start on part two of this super tiny roll top desk and tiny chair restoration. Before we get going, just always remember to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so you can follow along with everything we're doing, and give me a like and a comment if you wish. So I think today we should just get started here. Let's tear this little fella down, get it sanded, and get it re-glued. So let's get to it. Well, I have been asked a time or two what I use to effectively knock something apart or pull any nails. So I just figured I would show you my arsenal of my bare necessities for doing so, such a thing. So first off, if you really need to hit something pretty good, I have one of these rawhide mallets. It does a hell of a job, but it can also mark a little bit. So I chose I got this a few years ago down at uh, one of those like used hardware stores. It's just your typical rubber mallet. I think I paid a buck for it. So I just took a little bit of uh, padding like from a seat or whatever, and then uh, put a little bit of leather, and I just stapled it, stapled it all around there. And I've had this for years, and it's starting to come apart, but it's worked very well. Still gives a good hit, but is very non-marking, never really leaves a mark. Then if you need a little bit of help getting those joints apart, I love this flat bar. If you can see how flat it is, so you're not really ever going to mark up much of those joints. You could just stick it in there, hit it a little bit with the hammer, help get those joints apart. Then for pulling nails, I really like these. Those are pretty useful. You could just set it down, grab the nail, roll it over, or need like these side cutters, same thing, but usually you want to take, you want to get something under that, because if you're lifting up on that, that point there, that'll damage any of the wood. So that's why I like these, because that doesn't damage the wood as much. You can just put it right on the nail and rock it over, no damage, and for smaller nails, I like these little, these little fellas. So now it's just time to knock it all apart. There it is all sanded up, ready to be re-glued. All right, now that we got that all sanded down there, there is one little detail on there that I sanded eh, a little heavy. So I'm gonna add that back in just cause I like that at the top. That's the top uh, top leg where the, tr the chair rail top will connect. So we'll just add that back in with our little carving knife. Now we can just hit it with a little bit of sandpaper to smooth it back out a little bit. I thought I'd do. Just to give it a little bit of that character back in there. All right, there's a the little fellow all glued up. And I even put a little bit of filler in there to get that started. This will all be stained, finished a dark brown color. So I got that dark brown filler in there. We'll just have to do a little bit of touch-up sanding. And then I also got the base. Got that all glued up. Then I uh, made a new back stretcher there. Originally when it came to me, somebody had repaired it prior. And they had just used a dowel going across the back. And I thought, I'm not going to leave that, so... Got that all glued up, then started repairing this, and I need to test it before I glue the canvas on the back. So I gotta get the top glued onto this, 
with the two sides so I can test that timbre or however you pronounce that. But before I glue those up, I need to cut this detail out to recess that leather down in there, glue that up. So I'll do that first, get everything glued on that, test that timbre, we'll go from there. Now that I got these all routed out, I can go ahead and glue this table back together. And I will wait until after I do all the finishing to glue those on. Okay, so I tested that, the roll top in there, and it seemed to be about the right length. So I just went ahead, I'm gonna glue a few extra on so I can always cut off be easier to cut off than to add. So, I bought this online. This is duck canvas. And I figured I'd get the darker brown just so it could blend in with the, the finish that this will be. I washed and dried it, I ironed it out, and I made sure that it was crystal clear clean. And I put it on a very flat piece of MDF that was clean, clamped it down, little plastic underneath there, because, you know, if you glue that down, you could just glue it right to that board so that plastic will prevent that from sticking to there. Then I went ahead and I drew straight parallel lines after I had this just taut. This isn't pulled tight by any means. And then I did a, a mark where I figured each one they're roughly a hair under 13 sixteenths of an inch. So I just made each space 13 sixteenths of an inch just to give it just a hair of a gap. And now I'm just kind of test fitting them all before I actually glue. So it's about where I'm at now. So I'm just gonna get these glued down, let that sit overnight and cross my fingers that this works. Got all these fairly evenly spaced and the measurement is the same from there to there and it seems to be fairly square and as this glue tack gets tacky I mean these really start to stick down and you can just nudge them a little bit it makes it very easy so I'll get the weight on top of there And this is kind of like a rubber mat. Like I said, that because each one might not be the exact same height. So this mat will help to fill in any of those little gaps. Well, after letting that glue set up overnight, I took it out of there and it didn't look too bad. So just a little bit of touch up sanding, some of the glue spots. And I trimmed one of the pieces off and then also one of the, the bigger ones there at the, at the end. Because it just didn't really fit right in there. So I'm going to put it in there now, show you how it looks and how it all works out. seem a little bit tight in some spots and I even took the router and uh, made that channel in there just a little bit bigger and even rounded over the corners of some of these and it's still it just doesn't seem no matter what I do it's really never gonna slide right uh, it's pretty primitive in design and everything so I don't think it probably ever did just flow like a like a real roll top desk so I mean once I get this finished I could just get some wax in there and I think that'll really help it slide. 
And then also, couldn't think of what to do as far as like a little handle. So I remembered on the purse there were some of these little tabs. So I cut one of these off and I think I'm just going to put it on with a nail. And on the other side, just with a washer, just uh, cut it off and mushroom it over that washer. And it'll be able to move freely. And then put it there, I guess just in the middle. And then you'll be able to pull it up and pull it down with that. And then this, I have it set up to go... Looks like it'll go just about too exposed there. Because you only have so much room in the back before that hits. There's that back panel back there, so it'll keep it from really going anywhere. So I think we're all good to go. I got this all top all glued together, this screwed to the base. Just have to hit it really quick with maybe a little bit of 220 just to give it a final smoothing. And let's get some stain on this thing finally. Well, I got some stain mixed up here. What I typically do is I'll just have these. You can buy these empty jars at your hardware store for a few pennies and they work well because they have measurements right on the side there for you. So what I like to do, uh, if I'm mixing up any kind of stain and I have anything left over, say you take one, you have your browns. Have another one, you have your reds. So it's just a good way to maybe, you know, conserve some stain, not waste it as much, and uh, just keep reusing it, keep the lid on it, it should be pretty good, as long as it doesn't get, you know, it's a, still a good consistency, stir it up, it's going to be good for you. But I was just setting up here and I want to tell you guys a quick story. So every time I'm laying down uh, newspapers on the table and I see like an obituary now, I always flip it over because... I don't want to like make anybody sad if they're watching a video and see somebody but a uh, crazy story was for that wooden spoon uh, video that I made for my friend's parents for Christmas let me see if I can remember this right it was his mother's cousin who cut down the tree and you know mulched it up or whatever and then and this was years ago that he did this and before Christmas, he passed away, and his obituary was visible as I was oiling the spoons. And if that isn't an insane, crazy coincidence, and I didn't know him, I didn't know his name or anything, but his parents watched a video, and they're like, his obituary is right there where you're oiling the spoons. And that, I just, that was pretty crazy. I thought I'd share that, so, yeah, so now I just try to keep the obituaries, keep those flipped down. But, uh, yeah, so I'll get the stain in here now. And now that we got the stain on all that, it's still drying. It looks pretty good, though. Customer when it all brown. It's a little bit of variation in there. I think overall looks pretty good. Probably just do a little bit of a walnut toner coat. Chairs a little bit later, so we'll get that a little bit darker. Got all the bits and pieces back there too. So we'll let these dry overnight, see what they look like in the morning. In the meantime, it's a good old buck out there. Hey Buck, what do you think of this old boy? Go take a pee on that. Hey Buck, go. Buck. Oh, Buck. <laughs> and totally unfazed. you find Buck? But tomorrow the forecast is back to rain and snow and rain for a few days 
We're lucky we got out of here today, Buck. Well, buds, here we are. All ready for another spray day. Let's lay some lacquer. Starting off with that vinyl sealer coat. Got everything sanded up there, smoother than Bucko's belly button again. Things looking really good. Laid that sealer on pretty heavy. So we could just smooth it out, give it a nice little top coat. Just gonna spray it off a little here, spray the dust off. And let's lay the last of that lacquer. And just like I said yesterday on that sunny hike, today's forecast was snow. And for once the weatherman was right. It is snowing and blowing. Well buds, here we are, another one done. I did not think I would be able to say that. <laughs> Out of the probably thousands of pieces that I have touched to restore or refinish or repair, this little super tiny desk it will always be in my memory as one of the hardest little pieces of furniture <laughs> to refinish. So, as always, give me a like, share, comment, do whatever you want. Just remember to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you can see all the future videos and follow along with all the future projects. As always, stick around for all the close-up video and pictures. Thanks for watching, buds. Stay safe out there. But does it roll, you ask? It does roll.